Welcome back, football fans, to another episode of The Prediction Show. I tell you what, you've done your job this week. Um, I give you a target in terms of likes to get me to record a video the next day, and you've absolutely smashed it. So here I am once more. We'll start with the games from yesterday. We were so very close to landing uh, this selection. Um, Darwin Nunez shot on target, yes. Phil Foden to score or assist, yes. Yamin Lamal over evens to score or assist. Well done if you took that as a single. And then, of course... Here, Leipzig, Liverpool. Look at the shots, 13 and 17. There was uh, disallowed goals. There was both teams hitting the bar in the post. There was great saves from both keepers. It's a surprising end result that this ended 1-0, to be fair. Um, but at the same time, you know, Liverpool have been defending very, very well. They have been grinding out these kind of results, especially away from home. So there is potential that we could have seen something like this happening. But uh, that was our more outlandish bet. And uh, I think everybody, everybody, even the bookmakers, is surprised that this one ended 0-0. Atalanta against Celtic. Uh, we can look at the odds once more. Pre-game, BTTS, 1.62. Over 2.5 goals, 1.36. So the bookies were absolutely expecting at least two goals in this game. 1.11 for the odds there. So to Bet365, you may have won this small battle. But believe me, you will not win the war. We go again, we grab our statistical shovels to dig deep into the data. And with that said, let's jump into the Europa League for today. Run the intro. Football drives our hearts. Data plays its part. Value bets we seek with Joe from Model Arts. Just before we get started, here is the winner of yesterday's comment draw. Well done to you. And again, you can be in with a chance to win Odd Alerts Pro. Just comment down below. And I'm going to make it easy for you because I've got a question. Which team is going to win the Europa League this season? Can Man United get another trophy under Eric Ten Hag? Will Frankfurt go the distance as they have in recent times? Ajax, can they get another European trophy under their belt? Uh, it's been a bad couple of you know years or so, hasn't it, for Ajax? That would be a nice story. Let us all know in the comments. So here are the games then. We'll breeze through some of these. I'll just uh, give my thoughts on the ones that I see. I'm doing this off the cuff. So the first thing that uh, stands out to me here is Riga's FC and BTTS are over evens once more. 2-2 in the previous game with Galatasaray. That was a home game, of course. Um, and they are real outsiders for this one. 1.13 for Frankfurt to get the victory who are, you know, they've got decent pedigree in recent years in European competitions, but that might be an interesting single or maybe you want to create a double with a couple of uh, long shot odds and uh, Rigas to, to score, basically. Again, um, given that they did so well against Galatasaray, it could be a good option. Nice are away at one of the best teams in Hungary. That's what I'm going to call them because, yeah, I can't pronounce that. And it's quite evenly matched here, which... You know, I think that means there could be value in Nice or draw or again, maybe BTTS. Um, as you see, it is 1.75, which is uh, quite generous, I think, to be honest. Quarabag versus Ajax as well. I, I do like some of the odds here um, because you never quite know the difference between the leagues, do you? Especially at this early stage in the season, what is the level going to be? between them where is that medium um could Ajax just go there and win 2-3-0 or a Quarabag a much better side they are probably deeper into their respective league at the moment which does count for something for sure uh, Roma versus Kiev firm favorites there 1.48 and there it is Porto against Hoffenheim a value bet um, as posted in the bet slip generator channel on telegram which launched recently uh, let me know if you've got any feedback on that how are you liking it uh, it was 1.55. The odds have now dropped. And one of the games we will look at, which is very evenly priced, Fenerbahce hosting Manchester United. We've also got Rangers at home and Tottenham at home, who will be without Son. Um, he was never going to play this game, apparently. That's what Ange Postacoglu said as of late. Now, to help us in this endeavour, I have also created a last 10 table, as I did for the Tuesday video, I think it was. Um, and what I've actually done is made an improvement on this. So the Champions League one, it took all Champions League teams. So we had some teams from qualifying. This is only going to show us now teams that are actually playing in the Europa League right now. So as you can see, uh, we've got Slavia Praha at the top. They've won eight out of the last 10. Ajax, 
who are away at Quarabag. They have won seven out of the last ten. Ludogorets, who win most of their games in their respective league, they've won seven, as have Rangers and Spurs. So in terms of games lost, this is actually quite interesting, I think. Hoffenheim are top in terms of, you know, the worst with four. So actually, some of these teams in the Europa League, they're, they're not really coming into it. There's no stinkers, you know what I mean? <laughs> four out of ten for Hoffenheim is the absolute worst. Ajax, Praha, uh, Victoria Pleasant, FCSB. Um, is that Basel? I'm sure it's Basel. I'll have to check. Um, and then Fenerbahce. I've lost one out of the last ten. And of course, um, they are hosting Manchester United tonight. We are going to take a look at that one because that one is going to be fascinating. For that one, we'll put together a bet build just for that game. So in terms of goals, we have Frankfurt, Hoffenheim, Ajax, um, all at the top. And Riga's FC also in that top five. So Frankfurt against Riga's, you know, mentioned BTTS, the potential there. We had it for the previous game. It, it could be a nice option. Let's see. Ajax scoring the most goals, Frankfurt scoring 25, Tottenham, Rigas FC up there again. The signs, the stars are aligning. Goals against Ludogorets have conceded three goals in the last 10 games. Fantastic uh, form domestically, of course. And this is where you have to think about those levels and, and, and depending on who they're playing, how difficult a game will it be, the different tactics, different playing styles between leagues and nations as well. It is quite interesting trying to trying to think about that matchup. Now in terms of the most goals conceded, we have Leon, Besiktas, Midtjylland, Frankfurt. Frankfurt again, you know, we're being told to basically play BTTS at this point. And Hoffenheim there as well. Remember that uh, Porto at 1.55 at least was a value bet. We'll go in and check that again. Uh, but Porto maybe to score over one goal or maybe just over 2.5 goals in that game if Hoffenheim go there and you know, give it everything. I think as well, just, just to say with this new format, I feel like there's less pressure. I mean, we can check the data in a future video, check the away performances compared to when it was the group stage. But I just think teams potentially might be going away from home because there's more games, isn't there? And there's less pressure in those early games, I feel. Um, you saw Arsenal and City rotate heavily. You know, they were playing each other the next weekend. So it was like, yeah, we'll take a draw. You know, we'll take a draw in the early game. It's fine. It's not the end of the world. And I think some of these away teams, they're thinking, you know, if we, if we only need to finish in, what is it, the top eight or something, um, we can go for it away from home. And, you know, we can, if we need a point later on, we can just get one at home. Potentially, I don't know. You know, I don't know. How, that's how I would maybe approach it if I was a manager, because it is a bit of a different feeling with this competition. Uh, we will now go to over 2.5 goals, and it is Tottenham. Tottenham, 9 out of 10. Lazio, 9 out of 10. Riga's FC. FS, sorry. Right. You know what? We're just going to jump to Bet365 for now and just have a look at that game. So again, it's kind of interesting, isn't it, what we were on about with the Monaco game. Um, over 2.5 goals is super, super low. 1.36, but BTTS is over evens. Now are the bookies expecting this to be 3-0? Are they expecting it to be 4-1? If so, then BTTS lands 2-1. You know, again, BTTS lands. I just like to compare that and then you can also go and com compare the correct score odds as well because they don't always line up as they should if you if you understand what I mean so I think for this one we're going to start with a, a bit of more of an outlandish bet for this one but I, I still have a lot of faith in this BTTS pick uh, Regus became one of my favorite teams uh, after that Galatasaray performance now we will just check their away data, of course. Um, this data that you see here is just looking at all of the last 10 games, regardless of where they've played. So we'll go into the results. I actually want to show you something here. I said that um, I would do this yesterday and I did. So now there is a nice breakup of the league. So you can see when they played a Europa League game. And I've also removed friendlies from this list. I don't think they offer anything, to be honest. So I've removed friendlies for now. Let me know if you want them back. Maybe I can put a little toggle in here. Or something but I think for now they're not needed so away from home we can see that they've scored in the majority of games they didn't score against Riga who are second and it is the two Rigas in that league in the Latvian league uh, but apart from that they do score in the majority of games. Bodo Glimt 4-0 in the Champions League qualifying um, Bodo Glimt looks like they sent them out uh, and then Bodo Glimt went went on to also be eliminated in the next round. If we look at the probability model for this one, we can see BTTS 1.64. So this is a value bet compared to the probability model. We can do a fixture simulation, gives us a 2-1 victory to the home side, and maybe they can um, 
run away with it a little bit more, maybe 3-1, 4-1, who knows? I'm just going off the bookmaker's odds here. The bookmaker's clearly expecting a very dominant Frankfurt performance, or maybe it is a bit of a trap from the bookmakers. You never know. So BTTS has been added to this. Let me know what you think about this one in the comments. Now, in terms of goals against Hoffenheim, Midtjylland and Frankfurt, I mean, I just can't, I'm, this is just data. We're just following the data here. Frankfurt have conceded in nine of the last 10 games played. Um, Rigas FC, come on, you can do it. Over evens, maybe you play it as a single, who knows. Um, it is a 5.45 game, so you might not want to mix it with the later games. Let me know about that. And uh, yeah, they've conceded in nine of the last 10 games, as you can see here. Ludigretz, very good defensively. Rangers also as well. So that could be one to watch out for or one to avoid. In terms of BTTS, Hoffenheim, uh, 9 out of 10. Lazio, who are away at FC Twente, that could be an interesting one to check out. That is an 8pm game, so we'll take a look at that after we've uh, put together a double for the 5.45s. And uh, Frankfurt, 8 out of the last 10 games. Rigas FC there as well. I mean, as I continue to scroll... It, the signs just keep popping up, don't they? Um, and it's obviously going to be nil-nil now. It's just obviously going to be nil-nil. Let's get on to fouls then. And uh, we have uh, Fenerbahce right up there as well. I'm, I'm, I'm gravitating towards fouls and cards and goals in the Fenerbahce Manchester United game. Um, just to let you know, uh, what a game. What a what a story. We will, we will get to that. Now, in terms of fouls won, which is interesting, Fenerbahce were up there as well. If you watched the Premier League preview the other day, uh, Man United are top of the pile in terms of two or more cards, and we actually had them on uh, as a winning selection um, against Brentford. Two or more cards. They've, they've had two or more cards in every single Premier League game, and Fenerbahce winning plenty of fouls in the last 10 games. Only Slavia Praha uh, with more. And Quarabag not winning many at all. 31, and they are hosting Ajax. Ajax are over evens and that is very, very enticing. In terms of fouls committed, Louis Goretz, Fenerbahce, Nice, Anderlecht, uh, Slavia Praha, uh, Quarabag not committing many fouls either. Manchester United actually uh, 91, although I think this game will be a very, very different test for them. And uh, even, even though this number is on the low side compared to the other teams, they are still getting cards. The fouls that they commit are bad enough to, to give a yellow card, even if it's the first or second foul, um, because they've had two or more cards, as I say, in every Premier League game. Yellow cards total the two Turkish teams at the top of the pile. Um, there is no surprise there. And there we go, yellow cards for Manchester United and Fenerbahce. So what we're going to do is uh, check out the Ajax game now, and um, then we are going to check out the Manchester United game and put together a single for that. So what we can do is look at the last 25 games for these two teams. Ajax averaging 2.17 goals and uh, Quarabag 2.5. Conceding 1.25 at home, Quarabag. So they are still conceding goals. You can look at the occurrence. No nil-nils in this, in this period. Um, low number of clean sheets for Ajax away from home. BTTS in 75% of all these games. If we look at the overall form, um, they are a bit better at home. But still... No nil-nils between these two teams during that period and Ajax scoring in 90% of all games across this period. And um, I must admit, I'm enticed by the odds. Let's have a look at Quarabag's record so far. They lost 3-0 to Spurs and then they lost to Malmo as well. Interestingly, let's have a look at all competitions. And we can see in the Premier League, they come into this having lost 4-0. 4-0. Let's have a look at the rest of their home games. They've conceded in the last couple. They've conceded in 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Five out of the last six games. And Ajax come into this unbeaten since August, um, since the opening two weekends of the season. So Ajax at the moment beat ETS in the last three games, including a draw away at Slavia Praha, which is a bit interesting, isn't it? If we look at their away form... It is five of the last six games have ended BTTS and they're scoring in the majority of away games, aren't they? They've uh, scored in all away games apart from that Feyenoord drumming 6-0. That was last season, though. Uh, in terms of this season, they started early with the Europa League qualification and they have scored in every away game. And they've only lost one game, which was away at Breda. I've been to Breda, actually. My friend was at university there for six months. Nice quiet town. We played snooker all day. And we may have smoked some grass. So let's have a look at the probability model. 1.89. So again, it is a value bet here that we found 
for Ajax. Let's have a look at the odds here. And I think I'm going to compare this with the Rigas game. Let me know what you think about this. Um, for these Europa League games and Champions League and stuff, I am feeling a bit more experimental. Let me know if you just want me to do more sensible bet builders. I mean, we've looked at the data, haven't we? For Frankfurt and Rigas, I think 1.12 for Frankfurt to win this game, given that Rigas actually drew with Galatasaray. Galatasaray, not Fenerbahce, Galatasaray with Ossimen and co. I, I don't know. I, and Frankfurt conceding in, what was it, eight or nine out of the last 10? Nine out of the last 10, BTCS in eight of the last 10 games. I'm not saying that Rigas are going to go there and win, absolutely not. But 1.12 feels like a trap to me. So uh, Bet365 does this thing here. You, they've got four out of five defeats. You should not really trust that because... Um, it uses just European games, I imagine, because they lost the last couple of Europa League games. And before that, you're talking, you know, a year ago or something. So shouldn't really show it without allowing you to click into it and check it out, which it doesn't, of course. I mean, if if they offered you in detailed data, they just they just wouldn't. Why would they? So I'm, I've been umming and ahhing about this, and there's a few things here. BTTS is what I'm feeling the most, uh, 1.5. I just wish the odds were a bit higher, to be honest. I think they should be, to be honest. Uh, 1.57 for over 2.5 goals. Um, if you look at BTTS on the results tab, away from home, you can see the majority of games do end BTTS for Ajax this season. For Quarabag, the last three games have not. Um, but as we saw, they come into this with a defeat. And if we're just looking at goals conceded, they have conceded um, in the majority in recent times, which is, I don't know, I would say unlike them, but clearly they are conceding goals. So Ajax to get a goal in the second half, um, and uh, I was looking at the data, and uh, for Quarabag, it is 94% in terms of second half goals across the last 25 at home. And for Ajax, it is 92%. So Ajax to score in the second half, I'm just thinking if there is the team that's going to score in the second half, who will it be? Potentially Ajax, um, because I do fancy them to win. I think the odds are great for them to win, to be honest. Um, and if you were wanting to make this a bit more outlandish, you could definitely go with them to win this game. So 3.15, that is the first double. Now let's jump to the Manchester United game. And we've already seen the data for cards. So let us know what you think in the comments for the Man United game as we put it together. So we'll start with the last 25 data, and I just want to say straight away that even if this data was different, this is still an incredibly tough game for Man United away at Fenerbahce with the obvious narrative. Ex-manager Jose Mourinho looking to get one over his old club. And uh, we'll take a look at the form that they've been in so far this season. Um, unbeaten in the Europa League, but uh, goals conceded in both of those games. And their home form... They lost to Galatasaray, which would have been, you know, a big shame for Jose and the fans there. But apart from that, they are looking pretty good at home. No defeat since March, which did come in the Conference League, uh, but they now have Mourinho, of course. Now, Manchester United have fired blanks in two of the last three games. That Villa performance was a, a tired performance from both teams, I think. So, Man United, uh, they fired blanks in two out of the last three games, but in the middle of that, they had a 3-3, which was in the Europa League against Porto. Uh, the last meeting between these two was 2016. It was a 2-1 victory for Fenerbahce, away at Fenerbahce. As I say, it doesn't matter. Look, 2004, away at Fenerbahce, 3-0 to Fenerbahce. This is a tough place to come when you are a big team because the fans raise it, the players raise it, and throw into the mix Mourinho. It's, it's going to be a good game. Let's have a look at the player props tool quickly. So the player props tool, let's start typing Manchester United. There we are, Fenerbahce, Manchester United. By default, we see the last 20 games. Edin Dzeko, what a throwback. Dusan Tadic as well. Um, they've got an all right team. Fred, Fred coming back to haunt Manchester United. Will he get a card? Will he commit a foul? Uh, Soyonku as well, former Leicester centre-back. St. Maximan. Ready to terrorise this Manchester United defence. Um, they've got an interesting team. Bright Asai Samuel is an ex-Blackpool player, Blackpool youth player. Well uh, done to him. He went to QPR for a bit and now he's at Fenerbahce. Fair play. He plays as a sort of wing back. So let's look at the last 10 games and we'll take a look at shots on target, shall we? And we can see that Garnacho with 14 in 9. I'm telling you, Garnacho. When he learns how to finish, and I know he scores good goals, but he misses easy chances. He puts away the hardest chances that there is in a game. 
against uh, Brentford the other day, even in the first half, he had four or five shots on target that you just got to bury him. And he, and he just shoots them straight at the keeper, P-rolls them to the keeper. So when he learns to actually be a bit more clinical, he's going to be some player. Uh, and maybe he can grow into that player this season with uh, Van Nistelrooy helping him behind the scenes. Dusan Tadic with nine shots in his last 10 games. And uh, interestingly here, I don't see Bruno Fernandes. He is in a bit of a, a sticky patch of form at the moment. He has had just six shots in his last 10 games. Hoyland with six, De Litt with six. And obviously most of those are headers. Uh, but De Litt with six shots in his last eight games. Uh, potentially um, a, a nice market to explore there if you want to uh, boost the odds a little bit. We'll go now to yellow cards. Let's see who's got the most yellow cards. Five yellow cards for Kobe Mainu, who will be out. Fred with four in nine, as expected. He's up there. Soyonku, uh, Bacau. Lissandro Martinez, he's been a bit rash as of late. What about fouls then? Let's take a look at fouls. It is Oosterwald with 20 fouls in 10 games. That is quite a lot, isn't it? And um, Amrabat is here as well. Amrabat for Fenerbahce. So the top four players are all from Fenerbahce, and that is interesting. So we'll keep that up whilst we jump to Bet365. So the first selection I'm going to go with, the foundation is going to be BTTS. Both teams to receive a card, yes. It does bump it up a bit more, so we will put that on. I, I absolutely have no doubt about that. Manchester United to get more than one card in the game, no doubt about that. Um, and uh, this one could get out of hand, it could get heated, and let's, let's, let's hope it gets that way. Fred to commit a foul gets us to 2.87. Um, I would select that. So I'm just debating what to go for here, and my head is between um, Mazraoui and Dalo for a foul. Mazraoui potentially up up, up against uh, St. Maximan. So, yeah, Johnny Evans isn't here. I would like him for a foul, but they're not listing him for some reason. I'm also debating over 1.5 goalkeeper saves for Onana so he just has to make two saves in the game which I think he's very capable of doing you know a corner free kick or something like that just a shot from open play Dzeko is you know a very good striker on his day I'm gonna go with Masrawi um, and uh, this gets us to fours and something has changed in here so now it's still fours um, let me know what you think about that Onana to make a couple of saves gets it to 4.75 should we go for it should we should we do it? I'll, I'll leave it up to you, but I'm going to do it for the purpose of this video. It gets us to fives. And if you've watched these videos in the past, you'll know that I don't, you know, it makes me wince, you know, the amount of things that you have to get to for this to land. Um, BTTS, both teams to receive a card over one card from Man United. Those I'm actually pretty confident about. Fred to commit a foul. I mean, this is Fred we're talking about. Uh, Maserawi to commit a foul. He's up against St. Maximum. That's the thinking there. I'm very keen to to go with Dallow for most of Man United's games because he commits fouls in most of the games. Check out the player props tool. Um, and uh, Onana to make over 1.5 saves. So that's at fives, but you could quite easily take this off and it's fours, which is still pretty good. So that is the slip for the Europa League game between Fenerbahce and Manchester United. Let us all know what you think in the comments. And we will end by just taking a look at the probability model. I think I mentioned the bets that generator at the start of the video, but honestly, when I don't plan these videos, as is the case today, because I woke up and saw that you'd smashed the like total again. So I just, you know, I hit record and here I am. Um, we'll take a look at the probability model. And we can see that actually one of the highest games is that BTTS play that we're on for Frankfurt and Riga. So hopefully the probability model is spot on tonight. Um, in terms of BTTS, it is the highest. No, it isn't. Fenerbahce, Manchester United, another game that we are on, 1.63. So negative value slightly uh, on Bet365 being offered. Um, and then we'll take a look as well in terms of uh, over 2.5 goals. We've got 62% for Tottenham Hotspur. We haven't taken a look at that game, but I would expect Tottenham to win that game pretty comfortably. Although it will be a test uh, as they go deeper into the Europa League for Tottenham, how they um, deal with the squad rotation, especially with Christmas coming up and the busy schedule in England. Because, um, yeah, I just think they don't really have the, the depth everywhere in the pitch they, 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 they quite consistently get injuries as well and if they can keep their squad fully fit throughout the season then they'll have a good chance of uh, getting far in the Europa League for sure so as I said let us all know who you think will win the Europa League and you'll be automatically entered into a draw to win Odd Alerts Pro thank you for watching and I'll see you tomorrow if you like this video